In part 1 of this series, you replace part of the castle wall with two boxes. Now you will use a free script to subdivide these two boxes into stone blocks. Using a web browser, go to www.scriptspot.com and do a search for a script named Brickerizer. It's a handy little script written by Michael Little that you need to download to a location on your hard drive. Keep in mind that like most free scripts, it is not perfect. However, its advantages outweigh its shortcomings. From the Max Script menu, choose Run Script and locate and run the script you just downloaded. A dialog appears. Here you can specify values like the number of stones to generate horizontally and vertically. Set them to about 26 across by 12 high for the front part of the wall. Notice the mortar percent value of 10. This creates a gap between the generated blocks. It is very important to set this value to 0 when using dynamics calculation. If you don't, the blocks will move to settle onto one another under the influence of gravity. Enable the end bricks option. This ensures that bricks do not protrude at wall ends but are rather cut to a vertical line. Choose the pick box button and select the front box in the scene. Click the Brickerize button. The original box is deleted and although stone blocks are created, there are two unexpected issues to resolve. First, the blocks were created higher than anticipated. One of the script shortcomings is that the box has to be sitting on Z level 0 for the bricks to match its location. This is not the case here. The other problem is that the right side seems to be protruding by exactly half a brick. Neither of these issues is critical, and both can easily be corrected. Select all the bricks. It's easier to do so from a side view. Assign a single wire color to the bricks. It will make selection easier later on. Using Snap Mode and Endpoint Mode, relocate the bricks to the proper level. On the right side of the wall, select all the full bricks that are slightly protruding and delete them. Select the half bricks that are protruding and relocate them into the gaps left by your last command. Run the script one more time for the inner wall. This time, use 26 by 10 bricks. Assign a single wire color to the inner box you generated. Adjust the bricks as you did earlier. Close the script dialog when done. Now that you have all the stone blocks, you still need to define which will be affected by the collision of the two projectiles. In fact, you will also need to define which ones will fracture. Select the two animated stones, hold Ctrl down and choose Edit, Select by, Color, and click a stone on the front wall. All the front bricks get selected. Holding Ctrl down again, repeat the procedure to select the bricks on the back wall. With all the bricks and the two animated stones selected, isolate the selection. Press F to switch the view into a front view. Press F3 to view the scene in wireframe mode. Scrub the animation to get a feel of where the stones hit the wall. One appears to hit higher than the other. Using the rectangular marquee, select two regions of bricks around the impact points. Make sure the two hurled stones are not selected in the process. Use the Alt key to deselect them if you need to. Press F3 to go back to shaded mode. Change the selection wire color 
Use the AutoCAD palette for more color choices. These bricks will be dynamic in nature and will move under impact, as opposed to the bricks from the rest of the wall which will remain static and will not yield. However, those bricks closest to the impact points ought to be subdivided into chunks and pieces. Using the lasso tool, use a V-shape selection to define the bricks that ought to be fractured. Change their white color. Fine-tune the selection to decide which blocks will fracture. To fracture the bricks you have just defined, you could rely on the Pro Boolean tool discussed in the first movie. However, it may not be the most productive way of going about it. Instead, you would again use a free script available for download from scriptspot.com. Go back to scriptspot.com and do a search for a script named Fracture. You'll find many to choose from. The one you will use here is named Fracture Voronoi, submitted by GARP. Download the latest version to a location on your hard drive. From the Max Script menu, choose Run Script. Locate the .ms file you just downloaded and open it. A dialog appears. Choose Pick Object and select one of the bricks you defined as one to fracture. Set the number of fragments you want to end up with. The default is 10. Set it to about 12. Keep in mind the higher the number, the more calculation is needed in the Mass Effect simulation. Set the uniform color option so that the resulting pieces share the same wire color as the original brick. Click the Break in 12 button. A moment later, the chunk is fractured into random smaller pieces. Select another brick to fracture. Click the Break button one more time to fracture that second brick. Repeat the procedure for the remaining bricks to shatter. This is slightly time consuming as the script does not allow for multiple selections. However, it is still faster than the ProCutter method. Do not forget to orbit around and fracture the bricks on the back wall. Close the script dialog when done. To tidy up the scene, you will create selection sets to make selections easier. Use Select by Color to select all the fractured pieces and create a selection set named Fragments. Remember to always press Enter after you've typed in the name of the selection set. Next, select the blocks around the fragments. These will eventually be defined as dynamic objects. Create a selection set for them and name it Dynamic Blocks. Finally, select the rest of the wall blocks, both the inner and outer walls. Use Ctrl to add to the selection. Create a selection set named Static Blocks. These are static and will not move when other objects collide with them. Select the two animated stones and create a selection set for them as well. Name it Projectiles. Exit Isolation Mode when done. Select all visible objects in the viewport. You can also use Ctrl A to that effect. If you recall, all these need to be taken into account in the simulation. Create a selection set for all selected objects. Name it Sim Objects. In the next movie, you assign a texture for the bricks and debris so that they match the rest of the castle's look and feel.